with the digital age, the amount of data that is generated is extraordinary. But that's where NSA, oh, we just need all the data. We need to collect it all. Which is an extraordinarily arrogant position to take. You have uh, somewhat of a professional past in Germany and that uh, East Germany and the Stasi have sort of formed uh, your world view. Would you like to elaborate on how the Stasi, as you know it or knew it, uh, compares to the present surveillance state that the NSA created? One, the Stasi was a closed society. It was only one country. Although they had a foreign, a foreign wing as well that was extremely efficient in terms of foreign intelligence. Uh, you're talking about a small country of 16, 17 million. I think what I was most taken by, if you're talking about the Stasi archives in particular, was just the monstrous efficiency of their record keeping. And yet today, the surveillance system that's been unleashed on the world over the last number of you know, years, last 15 years in particular, 15, 16 years, is unprecedented. I didn't imagine that the surveillance regime of the Stasi, of a police state, would be unleashed in, in, with, in such, in, with such scope, you know, the scope and scale of it, in the deepest of secrecy in the United States. We've had the information age for a long time. Invention of the Telegraph, you know, Marconi with radio, but, but we went from analog to digital. With the digital age, the amount of data that is generated is extraordinary, far beyond right, anything we'd ever imagined before. But that's where NSA, oh, we just need all the data. We need to collect it all. Which brings me back to the Stasi because their motto was literally to know everything, which is an extraordinarily arrogant position to take. And yet you're actually taking information far beyond stated purposes. I realize there's threats. There are real threats. There's people that want to kill others. There's people want to murder others. There are real crimes against humanity. But don't use national security to cover it all up. And don't use national security as an excuse to say we just need to peer in on the lives of others. So in essence, national security has given centralized governments, state governments, license to do all kinds of things in the shadows, away from public, the public interest. And yes, a direct threat to who we are. It's pointing a dagger at the heart of democracy. That's what I blew the whistle on because I knew what was at stake was not just my, my liberty. I was willing to sacrifice all of that, but it was for the sake of our freedom and our liberty and our rights and our privacy. And it wasn't just for U.S. citizens, it was for people all over the world. Before you blew the whistle, you went through all the official channels, right? Why did you do that? Why didn't you go like directly to a journalist? Part of the fidelity to the oath that I had taken was you follow the process, right? There was, there was a lawful mechanism, a legal, there was actually a legal regime in which you could report wrongdoing, abuse, violations of the law. It turns out that was actually used to expose me. I became target, I was marked. I was marked as a dissident by virtue of blowing the whistle even within the system. They did everything they could because I blew the whistle on their criminal violations of the Constitution on a mass scale, massive multi-billion dollar abuse and the failure to, pro to protect people, to keep people out of harm's way, 9-11, was an intelligence failure, right? They did everything they could under the Obama administration, although the investigation began on Bush, to take away life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I pretty much lost it all and was facing many, many decades in prison. Do you think it's rather a matter of fact of protecting yourself from surveillance or rather actively actually doing something? Else? Both. I, I've, I've said you have to be due, you know, due diligence is necessary. You know, be mindful of how you communicate, what you communicate. And of course, you may have heard of the news, you know, the FBI and Obama, he actually argued very passionately that manufacturers need to provide access to the government for any device. That's a back door. Remember when we want to have every single device that we live with, we communicate with, that gives us all the benefits of the digital age? and know they can be backdoored at any time just because the government might need to know something? Mm. And I think the problem with the backdoor is also that not only the government can go through there, anyone else who is capable of going in there can do that. Yes, and I lived this in the 90s when I was a contractor in NSA, the whole clipper chip fiasco. All those arguments were made. Don't you want to stop you know, child pornography? Don't you want to start you know, criminals? Don't you want to stop terrorism? That answer is yes, but that's, it's a seductive argument. 
It's why I run a privacy, a privacy exercise I've been running for a number of years, thousands and thousands of people. And it basically means, hey, turn over all your keys, all, all your passwords, all your accounts over to me for safekeeping. And every time everybody has said no, and this is being asked for as consenting adults, this is not being done behind their back or coercion, but then the real conversation begins. And that's where you say, that's where your own sovereignty starts both individually and collectively as a society, as a community. Did you personally get a lot of public support when you blew the whistle? But it took a long, long time because the mainstream media didn't want to actually tell the truth about what was going on until much, much later. Do you think that there can be a state, like nation states as we know them today, without surveillance. I have hope for the future, significant hope, uh, especially with your generation. It's the millennials that give me the most hope uh, because you get what's at stake, you really do. And although my generation in large part, many have, had writ have written you off, uh, I absolutely object to that because we need to have a world that's sustainable. And surveillance and secrecy and control uh, simply is not compatible with that. I cannot have happiness without liberty, and I cannot have liberty without life. And if I don't have life, I don't have nothing. What it means to have freedom? How dare anybody take that away? What, for the sake of an extraordinarily small percentage of people that would wish to do us harm? We're willing to compromise the fundamental underpinnings of our own individual sovereignty, our own freedom, our own liberties, our own privacy? can never take it for granted. So I recognize that I've served as inspiration. We're about to hear Snowden. He's, and I'm acknowledging Snowden, because I always hoped that Snowden would come along because the system had metastasized over the years since I blew the whistle. You cannot have journalism without uh, morality. You have to understand what you are looking at and why you think certain things are important.